All right, everybody, we're here with another edition of Hillsboro and 100 and Real, and I got a special guest with me today, my good friend, uh, longtime coach at Newell's Trent, Dana Leary. Dana, thanks for being with us today. Yeah, thanks, Kyle, for having me on. Yeah, so I'll give a little background on Dana, guys. I think we've met in 2012. That's about right, yeah. It's so about eight years ago, coming up on nine years. Um, and Dana was interested in the field. She was coaching basketball at the time and she was really into fitness. And uh, before we dive down more into our history and then, and then your journey, why don't you tell everybody uh, just currently where you're living at, um, a little bit about you as a background and then I'll start out peppering away with questions. Yeah, um, so I am currently living in Franklin Park, uh, I'm living with my best friend, Felice, for a lot of people that know her. Um, pretty much ever since the pandemic hit, uh, you know, she's been my uh, roommate. So living here, um, you know, coaching at Newell's Strength for oh, close to seven years now, six or seven years. Um, I'm also, uh, I do fascial stretch therapy. Um, I know we'll be talking about this later on. Um, yeah, I... I'm not sure if there's anything else you want me to okay. yeah, add in there. You you grew up in, in I know you went to Immaculata for high school. Yep. Right? So Thank you went there. Talk a little bit about um, your athletic history. Sure. Kind sure, of... yes. I went to Immaculata. I graduated there in 2004. Um, I think Mike alluded to me being a lot older than him in your podcast with him. <laughs> So um, yes, I'm a lot older than Mike. Um, I played basketball in Immaculata. Um, pretty much all my life, I played basketball. Um, that was like my sport, um, played point guard, shooting guard. And then my junior and senior year of high school, uh, I actually played a forward. So this is where like the strength and conditioning um, just became like a really big part of my life. Uh, I'll never forget like my end of my sophomore year, my coach was like, listen, you're not taking gym class anymore. You're only hitting the weight room. I've never, you know, never been in a weight room before, but I just re remember loving it. Like I remember certain cues my coach gave me, just certain things um, that always stuck with me. So I think that's where my love of like fitness started. Um, and I saw how it carried over into um, my athletic career. So it, you know, took me from a guard to, you know, jumping out of the building and playing a forward. And then ultimately I was recruited um, as a forward to Caldwell College. And I played basketball there as a four-year starter, um, small D2 school up in North Jersey. Um, yep. And I ended up, yeah, I played all four years there. My first year, I, they had me jumping center. <laughs> I never, never want to jump ball, <laughs> never want to jump ball, but um yeah, I played with my back to the basket. It was kind of like a, uh, it worked out of my advantage because I was five, you know, five, six. So if they put a big girl on me, you know, I'd play on the outside and, you know, have that quick first step to the basket. Then they put a guard on me. I could take them underneath. I have an advantage, you know, down low. Um, and then after uh, my four years of playing, I ended up uh, staying on the staff and uh, being an assistant uh, coach there for three seasons. No kidding. I don't know if I realized that. That's yeah. Yeah. So you were playing, so you were jumping center. Were you playing small forward or power forward? Both. So um, my freshman year of college, all of our seniors quit in, uh, right in September. Huh. They just decided we don't want to play basketball anymore. So our whole team was made up of freshmen and sophomores. Um, so my coach was like, yeah, you're, you know, I went in there to play a forward, but she's like, yeah, you're going to jump center. And um, it was kind of comical because here's this five, six, you know, they're all walking out to the middle every single time. I would just like look up and be like, all right, well, <laughs> give my best shot. <laughs> um, and then I would say, yeah, I would say I played, you know, power forward, small forward, played both positions all four years. Cool. Cool. Yeah. That kind of laid the foundation as far as getting into the weight room in high school, right? Mm -hmm. As far as laying that path for, for fitness. And then when you and I met, you were still coaching AAU ball. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember you you had approached me. You were interested in, in possibly getting into the field. And um, 
you know, we had talked throughout those first couple of years, right? And then uh, the serendipity of the timing, you know, I just let a, a staff member go. You reached back out and said, hey, I'm ready to do this. And then you've been, you've been in dual strength ever since. So talk about when you first started, because you kind of, I mean, I know you had prior internships and they had that one experience with the other place, but you kind of jumped right into it. What was that like? What were you thinking? You know, just the timing of it. Talk, talk about that part of your journey. Sure. Yeah, you you definitely came into my life at a time where I was trying to figure things out. And, um, you know, I had actually been in grad school um, for counseling psychology. So I was going at that time to be a school counselor. That's kind of how I envisioned, you know, my life. School counselor high school basketball coach. That's kind of how I thought things would play out. But um, during that time, and I think through my own struggles um, and then transitioning as an, you know, a college athlete to not having that anymore, I started really getting into nutrition and, and fitness. And um, you had given me that opportunity. I remember when you came to that practice, you worked out with the, you know, the girls that I was coaching at the time. You said, hey, the door's always open. Come and observe and, um, you know, check it out. And I kept saying, oh, you know, I'm still in grad school. I'm trying to figure it out. But I would go to your seminars. I would go to like your, you did the masterminds on Saturdays. And, um, and I just loved it. And it was different. Um, and I remember you always told me to, you know, if that's, if something's pulling me in that direction, that's, you know, that's where I need to go. And um, so when I graduated um, with my, with my master's, I started applying to all these school counseling jobs. And I just felt like something was missing. I kept going back to nutrition and fitness. And then I'll never forget, it was in March, I sent you an email and I'm like, hey, I'm ready. Like, can I, can I come in and meet with you? And you, you told me, come in tomorrow, you were having a team meeting. And I believe you just let go of one of your coaches at the time, maybe one of your main coaches. And uh, I came in and you kind of just threw me into it. <laughs> um, we were about to start, you know, you're like, I trust you, you know, I'll have you come in and you start observing Johnny. And at that time we weren't even open on Tuesdays and Thursday mornings. Um, and so I was like, yeah, like I took the opportunity. And I remember again, we were starting the fat shredder up and you were doing everybody's measurements in the office and you're like, all right, take them through the warm up boom roll this that and I was just like and I had all these people I just remember it was like one person after the other and uh yeah I mean it was scary but I would say it was probably one of the best things that you had done for me is just like you, you didn't allow me to like I could I didn't have the opportunity to say no right it was just like hey this is you threw me right into it I think that helped me to become more resilient right um uh and um and learn quickly so yeah, that's, that's kind of how it, it all started. And it was like perfect timing. Um, yeah. It was, and you know, from my point of view, it was, uh, you know, the way the universe works, you had reached out to me. I literally let go of uh, the one coach, the main coach that I had at the time. And that was kind of holding me back from letting them go was that, I, you know, I was still teaching, you know, there was all these hours to fill potentially. And uh, then you sent me the email literally that, it was either that night or the next day. Yeah. Like, All right, this is meant to be. Let's go. And then uh, yeah. so Dana definitely has the quickest onboarding uh, yeah. in the history. <laughs> <laughs> she, you know, she, she's been, Dana's seen a lot at the gym. So talk about, so you have precision nutrition certification. You went out to Arizona probably five or, is that five years ago for FST? Yeah, about, yeah, five years ago. Four or five. Some of those interests of yours, because <clears throat> obviously you coach at the gym, mm -hmm. um, but talk about your interest in nutrition, talk about what got you into that, talk, and then we'll talk about fascial stretch. Sure. Yeah, so um, the nutrition piece, uh, as I mentioned before, I kind of had my own struggles, which got me into fitness in the first place. Um, as I, after I graduated college, I just was feeling lost. And so I started doing my own research. And um, I would say that led me down like a dark path, um, but also what led me into this. So again, no regrets there, but um, a lot of lessons learned. Um, so yeah, I, I started, you know, dieting. Uh, I started out with like, I just wanna lose five pounds. So, okay, I kind of changed some eating habits. 
and then hit in the gym and I would do just pretty much all cardio. I was like, I'm never lifting a weight again after college. Like I want to change my body. And um, next thing you know, within a few months, I was down 30 pounds and it became very obsessive um, and to the point where, you know, people closest to me in my life uh, had to talk to me and um, I realized, okay, this isn't healthy anymore. Something that started out as I saw like a health journey became just this visible milestone I was trying to get to. And, um, and again, just ultimately led down an unhealthy path. And once I got down to that, you know, lost that 30 pounds, um, I was like, all right, maybe I should just find a coach. So not knowing any better, you know, I'm on Instagram, I follow this girl. Uh, I see like the results she's getting with these women. And um, so I reach out to her. And I think you, uh, I think I actually brought into you one day and that's where I got to like my wits end, um, what she had me eating, how much she had me working out, right? So uh, I was eating seven meals a day at like 1200 calories. I was working out three hours a day. So fasted cardio in the morning, go back at night, work out for an hour strength training and then do another 45 minutes of cardio. And that was six days a week. And what the issue for me there was again, besides the lack of knowledge at the time and realizing like, this isn't right. Who has this much time? Um, every time I tried to reach out to her, or I had questions or, or needed something, she wasn't there. But when it came time for that monthly payment, you know, she was reaching out to me. And that's where I realized like, that is, that's not coaching. And, you know, with any, like with anything else, I'm like, they're good coaching. There's bad coaching. Right. Um, but how much, how detrimental that ended up being to me and my body and mentally. Um, and when I, I came to you and you looked at it and said, okay, first thing we're doing is we're upping you a thousand calories and we're taking away all cardio. And it was so scary for me. So just seeing how okay, it wasn't just about food anymore, like mentally, I just wasn't in a, in a good place. Um, so I think that's what really inspired me to, um, to figure out, okay, there's gotta be a better way. And I wanna be a great coach. I wanna help people. I don't want people to um, experience what I did. And that's what uh, I would really say motivated me to go out and get the precision nutrition certification. What I loved about that is yes, you're, there's all the knowledge and the, the, you know, the physiology, which is extremely important. You need to understand that, but also the mental part of it and, and the habit forming and really, really understanding how to work with somebody. Um, so that's what I would say really led me down the path to, to nutrition and wanting to learn more about that and ultimately just how to coach people through that and not just looking at it as like, okay, this is what you need to eat. Here's a meal plan. Okay. But there's going to be obstacles in the way. Know that I'm here. I'm going to keep you accountable. Um, you know, if there's barriers, I'm going to help you with that, break that down. Okay. So that you're going to be successful. And we're going to do it in a healthy way and a sustainable way. Right. I think that's the biggest thing um, uh, that I wanted to see for people. Yeah. And, and, and I could tell you that all the women and even the, a lot of the guys, how uh, they look up to you, you know, cause you, that all growth comes from a deficit and you use that. I don't, I wouldn't say it's a bad experience, but you learn from that experience, right. To now it launched, Kyle, you're cutting yeah. out. Let's see here. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I lost you there. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you froze up for a I'll while. I'll just cut this. Let me put back on my.
Can you hear me, Dana? Yeah, I can hear you. You're yeah, there we go. That's what I'll do is I'll check that part out. Tell me when it's back to being fluid. Is that okay? I think, yeah, I think we're good now. Okay. So what I was saying is, um, you know, that came out of a deficit, right? Your, your desire for that, but I know how the impact you've had on people as far as, you know, you can speak from that experience. And especially as a woman, you're strong, you're muscular, you know, which is a great example for a lot of women that have been taught, kind of like that lady took you down that path where just get skinny, 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 and that's not necessarily healthy for people, everybody. So that that was been a really cool thing to, to watch, you know, from an outsider's perspective. And then you got into fascial stretch. What was the desire for that? What made you want to go out to Arizona? Tell us about that story. Yeah. Um, so again, it began with you. Um, I had never heard of fascial stretch therapy. I believe you went up to Vince's and Michelle worked on you. And uh, it was around my birthday. And he said, hey, I got you an hour session. I want you to go up there, check it out. Um, tell me what you think about it. Um, do you think this could be useful for our clients? So I went up there and um, Michelle worked on me for an hour. And I just, I mean, I have restrictions I didn't even realize I had. Yeah. Um, but I just remember getting off the table and just feeling lighter. Um, I just felt better. I felt like I could move more freely. Um, I slept really well that night. And so when I came back, I was like, yeah, I, I definitely think this would be something that our clients could benefit from. Um, I think recovery in general is just that missing piece of the puzzle for a lot of people. Um, so we talked about it and yeah, I ended up studying for it. So you, you, know, you do the studying piece first, uh, more the written exam, and then you go out to Arizona so I was out there from uh, Monday through Friday. It's, you know, it was nine to five and that was all hands on. And then on that Friday, you're actually working on, you know, Ann and Chris who, who developed this um, and they, you know, you pass or fail on there. And uh, that's kind of how it started. Came back and started working on people and practicing and yeah, I'm still doing it today. There are branches too, um, you know, coordinating with different recovery modalities as far as breathing and whatnot. But for people that have never had that, Dana, what would you like if I just met you and I said, okay, what is fascial stretch? Like the first time you, like, what, what's a, how would you briefly explain it to somebody? Like, what are they going to feel like? What, yeah. what is it? Yeah, no, great question. Um, Cause a lot of people have never heard of it before. Or I really like what's fascia. That's a lot of time I get that question. So I would say, first off, you know, fascia, you want to think of it as almost like a web or um, just this continual wrapping that we have from the bottom of our feet to our head. And it's holding in all of our tendons, ligaments, joints, muscles, right? And um, with that, you know, we want to, our body reacts to stress, whether it's emotional and physical. Um, so First of all, I want people to understand, okay, there's a structural piece, there's also an emotional piece to it. But um, with the fascia, um, let's say you're, st you're staying in a, a seated position. Over time, it adapts to that, right? So then you have these certain restrictions, this stiffness in your body, and it could be from working out, just repetitive movements that you're doing. Maybe there's some compensations somewhere. So what we're trying to do is just get that unstuck. So if you think of it like glue, right? Because the fascia, again, it holds our body together but if it becomes sticky and it becomes stiff, right? Um, we're not gonna be able to move as efficiently or freely and it can cause issues with you know, your posture, uh, blood flow, um, range of motion, right? So um, I would first explain that to somebody so they can understand, okay, well, what really is fascia? Um, and then as far as what to expect in a session, um, you know, it's table assisted stretching, right? So. Um, I'm pretty much doing all the work, using my body, my leverage um, to take them through these movements. Um, what I always tell our clients, you, I just want you to lay there, you're gonna relax. We're just gonna synchronize the breathing you know, with the movements that I'm doing just to get you into that more parasympathetic state. Um, it's kind of like a dance. Some people describe it as yoga on a table um, and it's pain-free. I'm not looking to, you know, I always go back to 
probably my basketball days, if like my hamstrings are tight, I have somebody just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and blowing past that point of resistance. You know, it's not like that. Right? Um, so you feel that point of resistance. That's kind of where you, where you're going to stop. It should be, it shouldn't be painful at all for the person. Um, and what I find or what clients have shared with me coming off of the table is that they just feel they, sometimes they can't even explain it. They're like, I just feel lighter. Mm -hmm. um, I feel taller. Um, I feel looser. Um, so yeah, that's uh, pretty much what a session will look like. And, you know, again, do 30 minutes or 60 minutes. It depends on that person, their goals. Are they using it for a specific goal? Is it something that's just for recovery, relaxation? Yeah, and it's you guys, it's something I've had. I've actually, I'm, I'm long overdue for another stretch. But when you get this from Dana, you, you do feel lighter. It, it's um, it's very relaxing too, though. So but Dana hit a key point there. You're not, you're not really doing anything. Dana's doing the work. You know, you're laying there, you relax, but your joints are going to open up and it's going to feel good. It's, it's different than massage in that way. You know, it's both trying to get you to relax, but it's much different than anything I've ever experienced. So some I highly recommend. So we'll make sure people know how they can get in touch with you at the end. So, okay. So you got, we got the nutrition, you got fascial stretch, and now you're the head trainer at Newell Strength. So talk about kind of that evolution. I mean, I know you're, you've always been a student of, of health and fitness, but what, you know, tell us about this role, what your vision for it is. Okay. Sure. Um, yeah. So it's been a pretty smooth transition so far. And I think that's because Mike's done like a tremendous job. He was the first person um, in that leadership role um, as a head trainer. So he kind of created that system, laid the foundation for it. So you know, for me stepping into that, uh, my vision for it is to really focus in on, I would say probably two key areas. And that's, I would say the, the science of coaching and then like the art of coaching, right? And, and um, you know, you need to know your X's and O's of training, right? We wanna have that, we need to know the technical piece of it um, and, and the principles and why we're doing what we're doing, right? But it also comes back to that quote of, you know, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? And that's where the art of coaching comes in, more of the interpersonal skills. How are we communicating with clients throughout a session? Our body language, the questions we're asking, how are we keeping them engaged, making it fun for them? So, um, you know, just really focusing on those two key areas so that we're providing um, a consistent client experience. Um, and I think we all go into the intent with it being one of the best hours of that client's life, right? Or that, their day, I should say. Um, and then also part of my vision for that is helping our coaches, um, guiding them and uh, to develop their, their strengths and their unique abilities. Um, I think Matt Kay, for those that know Matt and the coach under him, I think he's done a really good job with it. He's a great example. Um, you know, he's passionate about powerlifting. You can see that in what he writes and, and how he works out. And he's taken that passion and, you know, he started last year, he created the Iron Eaters group. There's a private Facebook page. Um, outside of his normal hours, he's going in on a Saturday or a Sunday and he's inviting these clients in and teaching them, okay, this is how to properly deadlift. And he'll focus on that for, you know, eight to 12 weeks. And, you know, be, if you've ever gone to one of those, you'll see how, that, how powerful that is for our community, right? It's a lot of energy, enthusiasm, people are cheering each other on. Um, he's done a really great job with it. And I think that that's huge. Um, I want our, our coaches to have that, you know, whatever their passion might be, hey, it's not just about the times the gym, you know, the gym is open, but if there's something else that you wanna do or you feel pulled towards, how can I help you to maybe develop that or, or get something going, um, you know, outside of those normal hours. Um, you know, I would say probably those three things are, are you know, are the things that I'm trying to focus in on um, as a head trainer. Yeah, and I'm very confident, you know, the job you're doing with them and you're going to continue to do. And they have a great role model in you because, and, and even other people that aren't, that aren't uh, on our staff, right? You Talk a little bit about your 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 mindset with success because you've taken a completely untraditional path, right? Right. You could have, you know, I know for a while your mom wanted you to be in the school system, right? She wanted you to be doing the therapy within the school system, but 
something pulled you away from the traditional route. So talk about your success mindset. Talk about what gave you the courage to do that. Sure. It, you know, I think in the beginning, it was, it was scary for me to take that leap, right? Because you envision yourself down one path. And, and it's, for me, that would have been the safe route to take. Um, but I think sometimes it's important, you can have a vision for yourself, but you also have to be open to opportunities and things that feel more aligned with you, right? And like, I don't, I didn't want to be so married to this, this plan, this vision, because somebody else wanted me to do it, or somebody else thought I'd be really good at it. I wanted to follow my own path and where I truly felt passionate. You know, I looked at you know, the gym as just a different platform. I wanted to be in the helping profession and I would have been if I took the school counseling route, but the gym was just a different platform. I'm doing that. Um, so I think, you know, when it comes to success is, you know, first off, you have to define what that is, you know, for yourself. And for me, it was just, okay, how, how can I, you know, how can I help people? And, um, and just, be true to myself and be authentic to myself in, in, in doing that. And I think it's embracing like the uncertainty of it all um, and knowing that there's gonna be fear, you know, but do it anyway. Um, that's where you grow, that's where you learn, that's how you expand. And it, you know, I think it's, uh, and again, just as I said before, I think that makes you, you know, makes you more resilient and, um, uh, yeah, that's. Yeah, and you've done a great. I mean, every time, guys, that I've, I've asked Dana to do something that might be outside her comfort zone, she usually. And, and you nailed it with your. Uh, hold on here. Did I lose you? I got you. Okay. Was when when Brandon came out, can you hear me? There you go. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I think about when you gave that, your presentation to that big, we had like a hundred some people <laughs> and every time, right, you, you've always been able to step up to the plate, you know, and step out that comfort zone, which has been, you know, it's, it's really gives me a lot of peace of mind, but it's also makes me proud of you to see that. Thank you. So it's a, you're, you're a great role model um, for everybody out there. Let's talk about these. I got some some final questions before uh, I tell people how to get in touch with you. Sure. What is so you're you're an avid student. Like I said, you're always studying. You're always doing continue ed. You're always learning, which is fantastic. If I ask you, what, what's your favorite book? What comes to mind? Probably the Leader Who Has No Title by Robin uh, Sharma. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would so, probably be. Well, it's tough. That or the obstacles away by Ryan Holiday, but those two. Okay, it's two good ones. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah. How about uh, if I ask Felicia, if I ask Peaches, if I ask Mary, some of your best friends, what is your superpower? What would they tell me? Great question. Um, I would say probably my ability to. Uh, connect with people and just really listen to people genuinely um, and make them feel comfortable. Uh, I think sometimes I'll have a, you know, I'll meet somebody and it'll be telling me something like, I don't even know why I'm telling you this. Uh, so I'd say that's probably, probably my superpower. Yeah, I would agree with that too. I mean, I see people when they come into the gym, you know, we have people that have never been in the gym before and are very uncomfortable. You make them feel instantly like okay i'm home i feel at peace here you know which is a, it's a superb skill it is a superpower so people can't do that you know so I, I would agree with that too what would you say um five years from now right i know you have visions uh, of continuing to grow uh, you know with the business it, but also growing the the i'll call it fascial stretch but i know you have bigger visions of where to take that so five years from now what comes to mind? What are you doing in life? Where are you at? Whew. Man, that's a, that's a tough one. I think it's tough for me. Uh, I recently just 
funny story two uh about two months ago i was at my mom's and i found this uh perfect day formula thing that i had written out in this seminar that luca had out in seattle and it was like your three-year vision and i read through it and i was like wow this is this is not right <laughs> like this is not where i'm at right now so i had to ask myself like why is that and i just i lose focus somewhere and to be honest it's just i had major shifts like personally um i think different uh, opportunities within the business professionally, all good stuff. It's just, um, say I'm not big into the whole like long-term thinking because even we go back to the school, if I followed my vision back in the day, I would be a school counselor right now, coach, and uh, probably be married maybe with like some kids. Yeah. Um, and, and again, totally different vision, right? Because there's these, you know, there's opportunities. It's just felt more aligned for me and I took them, but, um, just looking out into the future, I would say um, I would love to continue to build FST. Um, I've been thinking a lot about even like a mobile service, just with the way times are are changing. Um, I think that would be a cool thing to do, and um, obviously to continue to develop and grow in in my role here at Newell Strength and, and whatever comes my way in the future as we as we grow um, the business and. I would say it comes back to what you and me spoke about, that individual stack. I think I'm at a place right now where I'm trying to figure out how to kind of put that all together and um, you know, the, the counseling piece, psychology piece, the, the training, the, you know, or, or even marrying the, the counseling piece with the recovery piece. Yeah. Um, so again, I don't know what that looks like, um, but that's, that's where I'm, yeah. my focus is at. Yeah, I'm excited to, you know, See, see what you create you know, with that, because you know, you're definitely onto something with it. You know, definitely yeah. onto something. Yeah. So that's one I got for you. If you sure. were to go back and give the 20 year old Dana a piece of wisdom or advice, what would you tell her? Um, I would say. Hmm. Probably don't let, you know, perfect be the enemy of good, right? I think that there's a lot of times where I've let that hold me back from taking action um, or feeling like a lack of confidence or, or self-doubt and um, just holding me back in a sense from maybe doing something um, that I wanted to do um, or putting myself out there. I think I'm definitely getting better with that. And I think there's definitely moves I've made in my life where I haven't let that hold me back. But um, in general, I think to just um, accept that sometimes you, you know, you're not gonna be good at something right away. Um, we've talked about this, whether it's you know, writing or this or that. Hey, you might not be good. You might fail at it at first, but guess what? That's gonna help you to, to evolve. That's mm -hmm. how you're gonna get good feedback from people. And, um, you know, that's, that's how you become more successful. So I would, I would probably say that's the advice I'd give to myself. Yeah. <laughs> that's good stuff, Dana. So how can people get in touch with you if they want to, if they're interested in some recovery and, and fascial stretch and, sure. you know, possibly a combination of stuff like you just mentioned, how can they get, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Right now, I'd say just through my email, uh, it's Dana at newellstrength.com probably be the best way uh and you know, i'll get back to you cool cool it's definitely uh definitely somebody you guys want to connect with i promise you that so Thanks. i'll have that stuff in the show notes then let me just stop this recording okay